Hello, my name is George, and today I'm going to be walking through the Twitter or X post bot that I made using Python. The purpose of this bot is to allow a user to connect a Twitter or X developer account and post on this account with text and images on a scheduled basis from a SQLite database. In this database, you can use AI to generate tweets, and that's what we did here, and deploy this bot onto a remote Ubuntu server that, so this bot can continue running without any like needed maintenance or to have it run on your own personal device. So that, you know when a computer's off or when I'm not connected to the database or connected to the server, the bot will continue to post. So here's the account that we are going to be connected to here. This is called Biblical Art and we'll be posting Biblical Artworks with a title artist, date, and a short description. This will all come from the database, except the image will be temporarily downloaded and then deleted. So first I'm going to run the spot so you can see how it works. We're just going to call this function, create and post tweet. Temporary image. Perfect. So it's been posted now. We'll go back here, refresh the account, and we can see the post of our on our account. So that is how this bot works. And now I'll be quickly walking through the code, which can be found on GitHub here on how this works. So in this, we have an auth.py file. This uh, passes two authentication, authentications, OAuth1 and OAuth2 through Tweepy. And we use this in order to connect to the Twitter account and to post on its behalf. In order to authorize, you're gonna need these variables, environment variables or API keys here. And you can put them within keys.py is what I named my file. And this is not included on GitHub. This is going to be a, to be a PY file that you create yourself. Next, we have main. In main.py, this is the main script that's going to be run in order to start the bot. Here, we are going to authenticate to Twitter using those functions that we just went through. We have a set post times in Eastern Standard Time that tweets are going to be posted at. There's one function within this Python file called job, which just checks, which was run every minute and checks to see if the current time is within the post times within one minute. And if it is, it'll create and post the tweet. It'll call the create and post tweet function. All of the functions, the main functions are gonna be stored within utils.py. And now we're gonna take a look at the create and post tweet function. Before we do that, we're going to first check out the database that this bot is tweeting from. So this is the database that we are connected to. And this database has over 806 artworks or 806 tweets that are gonna be posted from it. And in this database, we have the title of the art, artist, the year, a search, and a description. And this database was generated using chat GPT or any other AI that you wanna use. And pretty much what I did was I asked for it to generate a list of artists. And then for each one of those artists, I just asked for a list of artworks by that artist. They would create a list of artworks by that artist, and then I'd ask for these to be put into CSV format following the structure that I explained to it before. Here, it would put it in the structure, and then I would take these entries, and I would put them into a CSV file here, and then I would use um, a function that can be found um, on GitHub as well to create the database and just create the SQL database. These functions can be found on the Xbox database uh, repository. And, but 
which is a separate repository from the bot itself, but this is just to create the database. So that's how the database works. In addition to this, um, I want the tweets to be more randomized, but I don't want the un, one tweet to be done twice before another tweet. So in order to do this, we create I created a dictionary that has a kind of like a key key value pairing so that for each tweet number, all right. So for the first tweet, it's going to post ID 754. For the second tweet, it's going to post ID 318. So for example, we used to tweet 20 at the beginning, which posts tweet ID 515. This way, the tweets are going to be randomized. And when we're looping through the tweets, seven tweets ID 718 won't be posted twice. It will be a unique tweet each time. All right. So in our create and post tweet, First thing we're going to do is we're going to load that dictionary in from the tweet order dict, and we're going to check our tweet counter file to see which tweet we're currently at. Then we're for the tweet um, ID that we're posting, we're going to fetch the data for that tweet and save it to variable so that we can use it to make a string to post to the tweet. So here, we grab all that information that's stored in the database and we save it to variables. And we're gonna make this F string here to attach to the tweet. If this F string is over 280 characters, we're gonna split it up into two separate tweets and this one's gonna to reply to the first one. Now that we have our text for the tweet from our database, we're now going to create an image. In order to do this, we're gonna need a link, create image link function, we're going to call the create image link function, which is up here. This function uses a Google custom search API to, to uh, get a link based on a search and an attempt that we're going to pass through. And this API can be found here. And in order to use this API, you're going to have to create uh, an engine, a search engine, which is very simple. Just follow these steps on here. You also need a key, API key, which you will put in your keys.py file. So here we're importing the key and the engine. So we have key, engine, the search, which is passed from the other function and the attempt, which if it is a bad link or we're not able to download the image, we will run this function again with another attempt, which will generate another link. So that's how that works. Once we get the link, if it is a wiki link, you will have to pass over a header and you want to change this so that it fits your um, information. That's just what they request. And once we download the image, we're going to save the image as a temporary image. You may have seen the image come up when we posted the tweet and it's going to be saved as a JPEG file and then posted here. This is how the posting is done. Here we use OAuth1 to put the media, the picture in a media ID format that WeP is looking for. And then we use OAuth2 or client version two to um, post that tweet. Then we have our success string that's posted out that we saw here. And then we delete the image. We increase the tweet counter to go to the next tweet. And if the tweet counter is at the end of the dictionary, we're going to reset it to one so that it loops through again. And that is how this all of this works. If we have a bad image um, or we're not able to download the image, this will create a new attempt. And then if we hit our max attempts, this will move to the next tweet so that it will always hopefully run. So the while loop will continue. Hopefully this catches all, all errors. And that's how this, how this uh, bot is run. Next thing that you do if someone was creating this or what I have done now that it's created is you want to deploy this on a remote server. So I'm going to quickly walk through that process and how that's done. So I'm using um, DigitalOcean to, uh, to the, this is how I purchased and how I can access the server. And it's an Ubuntu server. And I've already 
connected to it. So we're going to, or I haven't connected to it yet, but I've already set up how to connect to it. And we have our SSH here. So now we are connected, we're, we're logged in as the root loot user on the Ubuntu server. And if we look at our directory, we have a home directory that we've set up that has the art bot already into it. So if we navigate into that file, we will see that we have our app folder requirements.txt and our virtual environments. If we look within our app folder, we can see all of the files that we had within our VS Code walkthrough. Auth, keys, main, the database, the counter, and the dictionary. Now to run the main.py file, well, first thing you'd want to do is create your virtual environment. So let's just activate our virtual environment. Now we're in our virtual environment. We'll navigate to our app folder. Then we'll do python three main.py. So now our bot is running. Bot will post tweets at this time period. We're gonna close it out real quick. First, I'm gonna we're gonna run nano main.py to open up the Python file. So this here you can open up is gonna be this, it's pretty much the same as what I had in main.py. I've made some changes, just this print statement down here. And here we can have set our post times, just showing you how you can open up a file within, this is on the remote server. This is not on my uh, personal device. It's not stored here. So we're going to exit out of here. Just that's how you can use that file. And now we can do Python remain.py as we did before. Now the bot is running. Now this, this terminal is right now is, is running, but it's just running on, on this terminal here. So if I close this terminal, this bot is gonna stop. And if I turn, you know, if I turn off my device, this terminal will close and the bot will stop. In order for it to be run in a detached terminal, we are going to use tmux. So let's close this. And um, let's, I'm not sure how to exit out of the virtual environment, so I'm just gonna exit here. We logged out, we'll log back in and we will do tmux ls, and we don't have any running currently, but if we wanted to check to how many we have, we would, how many terminals we would have running, this is the command. And to create a new session, we are going to do tmux new session dash t, and we're gonna call this xbot one. And this opens up a new terminal where we are going to start main.py in. So we're gonna to navigate to our folder. Uh, before we go to main.py, we need to start our virtual environment. Virtual environment started. Now we can navigate to the app folder. And before we run it, we are going to actually edit it. So we can see this. We are going to put in a new post time. Let's put a post time in at 8. 32, or sorry, 11. Like this. Going to save this. And uh, we saved it. Now we're going to exit it. Now we can run our file. Oh, I did not. <laughs> Wrong format for this tuple. Okay, now our bot is running. And this is when it will post tweets at. And while this is running, we're going to let it continue. We are going to now detach from this 
bot. So in order to detach, we're gonna press Control B and then D. And now you can see that we have detached from the session. So now the session will continue to run um, no matter if I close this terminal, if I turn off my computer, anything that happens, the session will continue to run until it stops. So if we go Tmux, now that we have one started, LS, we can see that this session has, is, is running and when it was created. And now if, for example, we close out and we exit, close down our terminal and let this continue to run, in a minute, this will a new one will be posted. All right now that we refreshed our page, our bot has posted our artwork. We have title, artist, date, and description of it in the artwork here. And this all happened while. It was running on the remote server and the terminal was closed. And if we want to go back into the server, now let's go back into server and see what response we got. Better grab this. So it's not, here's our session that we had running. To see this, to open up the session, we are going to use command tmux patch session minus tx bot one. Okay, and this is what we had before. Now we have our success tweet number 18, tweet ID 702 has been posted. Now, here's the bot. This it did everything that we needed to do, and it will continue to run remotely until I delete the session. So we'll just close, we're gonna close the session now. So we stop the bot, we're gonna detach again, control B, D, T, Mux, LS. Now to end the session, we'll do T, Mux, kill session, minus T, and then at bot. Now we have no sessions running, so nothing will be posted now. But this is how you can use this code here to create a Twitter bot.